from Depkin Field in Hasbrook Heights, New Jersey, Verizon Files One Sports is proud to present New Jersey High School Football. Tonight, it's a battle for the 2018 North Jersey Interscholastic Conference Championship as the defending champion Rutherford Bulldogs have come calling to take on the Hasbrook Heights Aviators in a rematch of the 2017 NJIC Final. Hello, everyone. Alongside my broadcast partner, Scott Green, I'm Dan Long. Thanks so much for joining us. And Scott, we have two teams that are mirror images of one another, defending sectional champs with great running games and stingy defenses. You know, I, I can't help but think, but well, last year, one year ago, Hasbrook Heights comes into this game with an 18-game winning streak. Rutherford takes them out in overtime. And now here we are one year later, they come in with an 18 game winning streak. Hasbro Kites is looking to have something to prove and these two teams really know how to get after it. And with these two teams, two of the best teams in all of New Jersey, we know that we're going to be treated to two of the best players around. And for Rutherford to try to repeat as champions, they're going to be relying on an outstanding running back in Abilene Mendez here tonight. Well, he's one of the best running backs in the area. You put him up against anybody. A dual threat running back. He's got over 950 yards on the ground, 177 reception yards, 24 touchdowns. This kid can score. He is an electrifying player, and he's going to need a big night tonight. And speaking of big nights, Hasbro Heights has always gotten big performances from their do-everything player in Josiah Purdy. Well, Josiah Purdy, one of two great running backs in the backfield. He's another kid that can get it done. 330 yards, he's receiving 465 on the ground. He's got 17 touchdowns. He can break out in the open field. He has terrific upfield speed. He's another one that could be the big difference maker in tonight's game. So settle in fans for a good one. It's the 2018 NJIC Championship between Rutherford and Hasbrook Heights next on Verizon Fios One Sports. Here at Hasbrook Heights for this 2018 NJIC Final between Rutherford and Hasbrook Heights, two undefeated defending sectional championship teams squaring off in a rematch of last year's exciting 2017 final and a huge crowd in support of both sides on a very chilly night here in northern New Jersey. And taking a look at the head coaches for the respective sides for Rutherford. It's going to be Andy Howell in his ninth season in charge of the Bulldogs program. He led Rutherford to their first sectional championship in 51 years last year in North 2 Group 2 in 2017. And on the home side, the legendary figure manning the Hasbro Heights sidelines is Nick Del Calzo. In his 34th season at his alma mater, where he was the class of 1971, he was a standout defensive back for the Aviators during his playing days. And now, Scott, it's time for your Verizon Files 1 Sports keys to the game after this opening kickoff. And here's the 2018 NJIC Championship underway. Deflected off of Rutherford and into the end zone for a touchback. On a windy, cold night here in Hasbrook Heights, New Jersey. So it'll be first down and 10 for Rutherford starting. And now again, your keys to the game, Scott, here for tonight's title game. Well, for Rutherford, you got to give quarterback Kyle Russell time. Doesn't throw the ball a lot. He's 48 by 86, 56 percent, outstanding completion percentage, 749, five touchdowns. Got to give him a chance to throw the short pass. They want to be able to establish the run. They have a terrific running back in Albany and Mendez and Hasbro Heights. You have to be able to wrap up Mendez at the line of scrimmage. You let him get into the secondary. He has the breakup speed, and you want to look for the corners to be blitzing early and often. As Kyle Russell will start with a spread formation for Rutherford, 7-0 on the season. On first down, trying to set up the screen pass, deflected, but still taken in by Rutherford, bouncing off a would-be defender and all the way out to the 35-yard line. A completion to Chris Guzman gets the first down on first down. And you attack early, you get a chance, you get back. This we talked about the short passes, being able to allow him to get out into the open field and just a nice job on a quick drive on the first play. Guzman, a junior coming into tonight's game, 139s receiving on the season. 
Adds to that total on first down. On first down and 10 now for Rutherford. It's the first time that we'll see Mendez getting the carry. And once again, Scott, Rutherford bouncing off a couple of Hasbrook Hike defenders early on. Well, Mendez is a dual John threat. Sandler He's able to get Tebow out, drive down. those hard extra yards, and this is what Rutherford wants to do. Second they want to be able to get those four, five, six yards a pop. And an eight-yard pickup there on first down. Kyle Russell with the quarterback for Rutherford, 48 of 86 on the season, 749 yards passing. He's more of a running game threat for this team that really does most of their work on the ground. Second down and two for the Bulldogs in the opening possession of the night for either team. Russell back to pass, looking for a receiver, has one and makes the reception into Hasbrook Heights territory for the first down. And this is what we were just talking about with Kyle Russell. You give him time, he's going to be able to make the throw. He doesn't throw the ball off him, but when he does, he's very, very accurate at 56%. Nice spiral, hits him in, in stride. Through for 73 yards, a touchdown and an interception in this game against Hasbrook Heights last season. First and 10 Bulldogs. First down and 10. So Rutherford already picking up a couple of first downs through the air. And this is a team that has been really built on the ground coming into tonight's game, averaging just about 224 yards on the ground each game. There's a pitch to the near side. And once again, jitterbugging his way to the near side and open space is Mendez. Avalande Mendez. Mendez, such a dynamic threat for this offense of Rutherford. Close to 2,500 yards in his illustrious career. Uh, Mendez, he's able to take that pitch and get to the edge. And once he makes that turn, he's able to use the hand, brush him aside, and just lowers his head and gains those few extra yards. And in talking to Coach Hal before tonight's game, Scott, he was saying to us, if he gets into the open field, nobody can catch number one in white. As he is such a dangerous threat in the open field for Rutherford. Another first down here in the opening drive of the night in this 2018 NJIC championship tilt. Mendez to the left side of Russell. Russell, the quarterback, will take it himself to the left Russell side of the screw down to the turf. Met first by number 55. As we take a look Michael at the Lorman. starting offense for Rutherford on the line, Fisher, Gata, Nipolito, Malfa, and Soneros. The backs and receivers, Mendez, Finelli, Landrigan, Grzuitz, and Meister. As we've seen a lot of Mendez so far, that time the first run for Kyle Russell. At 119 yards rushing on the season coming into tonight's action. He's second down and six for Rutherford. Once again, it's going to quarterback keeper, and that time Hasbrook Heights not fooled on the play. Cannot get by the grasp of Settle and now the starting Tebow. lineups for the home-sided aviators of Hasbrook no Heights. Settlemeyer, Lorman, Marino, and Tyboats. Linebackers, Purdy, Vero, Choa, and Robertson. Safe Jenkins and Rinky in the secondary. So now the first third down opportunity for this Hasbrook Heist defense trying to make a stop after Rutherford was able to successfully convert on a couple of opportunities earlier on in this drive. Four wide receiver look. Guzman in motion. A pitch to the far side to Mendez. Mendez breaks free, enough for a first down, looking for more as he goes down the far sideline. A big run for Mendez has Rutherford in striking position. Well, he was able to do it from the left side before. Now you give it to him on the right side. And we talked about his upfield speed. He's very elusive. He's very tough to tackle in open space. He just keeps his head up. He's a north-south runner with a lot of finesse and a lot of speed. Rinky finally brought him down, saving the would-be touchdown. It's going to be first and goal, though, for Rutherford, trying to score in their opening possession. Wildcat, Mendez, going over to the right side. He'll be marked shy inside the five-yard line. That's a couple. He'll be brought down on the play, setting up second down and goal. Settlemeyer and Marino combining in from the defensive line to make that stop on Mendez, who had both of the touchdowns in this championship game last season for Rutherford, a 14-7 win in overtime. Well, Hasbrook Heights now really needs a defensive stop. Rutherford's been able to have their way this whole possession. 
Again in the Wildcat with Mendez getting the snap. A flag will fly as he was trying to curtail his way inside the perimeter. There will be a false start against Rutherford. First penalty of the evening for either team. Jerry Picasso, our referee for tonight's title game. So that'll back Rutherford up a bit. Last couple of times we've seen Mendez being the one in the Wildcat formation. As Coach Hal and his coaching staff looking on, calling in the plays. The second and goal after the penalty, moving the ball backwards. Russell back in as the QB, flanked at either side by his two running backs. Here's Russell looking to go in the corner. A lot of contact there. No call, and the pass will fall incomplete. You know, and this is right around the territory where Abilene Mendez is so tough. You know, he was the one that able to get you down there. Look for Mendez here to try to get that ball. You know, third down and goal. Typically, it's a pass situation. But this is a play where you try to get it to your, your runner and, and get him in there. It's, it's a cold evening. The ball's slippery. You know, throwing the ball is going to be a little tough. Trying to air that one out in the near side corner for a jump ball situation. Good pressure brought on the edge by Hasbrook Heights, disrupting that flow for Russell. So here's third and goal. In the back of the mind, you have to wonder if this is possibly four down territory as Rutherford does not have a successful field goal this season. Russell will roll the pocket and once again will look to throw. In the back of the end zone, overshoots his intended target. And once again, it's going to be incomplete and fourth and goal upcoming. And that's a great defense stand for Hasbrook Heights. You know, you let them march a, a good 80 some odd yards and, and then you're able to stop them inside the 10 yard line. Just an outstanding job defensively. That's a statement play right there. And that false start penalty proving to be deadly for Rutherford on that drive as well as it was second and goal. And it looked like Mendez running might have had an opportunity. Melanie Mendez to hold. Mateo Sullivan, number 34, the senior kicker, on to attempt the field goal. He's got five field, three of five so far this season from field goal percentages. Mendez with a hold. Sullivan's kick is up. And the, the kick, kick is up. good. So Rutherford does cash in on their opening drive of the evening, courtesy of a Mateo Sullivan field goal, and it's a 3-0 lead for the defending champs in the NJIC. 3-0 Rutherford on top of Hasbrook Heights. Certainly, Scott, they would have wanted more, but they'll definitely settle for that three-point and that early start to this game. Well, you know, last year, these are two teams that put up a lot of points. Last year, when these two teams met, you know, they put up 21 combined points. So, you know, every point is big when you put these two solid defenses against each other. And you can hear with the wind whipping around the stadium here at Depkin Field in Hasbrook Heights. It is a cold evening, storms brewing in the forecast later on of the night. So that made it even more of a challenging kick for Sullivan and credit him for cashing in. You know, this is a Rutherford team who's averaging, <clears throat> if you think about it, in their seven games, take out the Garfield game, which they won 21-6. Every other game, they've been in the 40s. So this is a team that's putting up a lot of numbers. and. Well, I'll tell you, can't tell me they're not cold out there. And great <laughs> fan support from both of these schools as you see so many people supporting Rutherford and Hasbrook Heights. This has a feel of not only a conference title game, but more of a state championship game as well. Well, you know, we spoke to Coach Andy Howell, Rutherford. He, he said, he said, you know, th this is, these may be small schools, but it's a big time atmosphere. And I love that statement. 73 yard that scoring drive capped off again by the Sullivan field goal. Now it's going to be Lawson Fisher, number 61. He'll do the kickoff honors for Rutherford. And Hasbrook Heights defense that's averaging and allowing just under 10 points a game once again stiffens deep in their own end, allowing only three on that opening drive. And you know what I liked about that opening drive is they really mixed in the pass and the run. They were able to establish the run, which I said was a big key for them, but they were able to give him time to pass, and that was so big. But when the field gets smaller, the plays get tougher. And also Mendez with a big run on third down that moved them into deep scoring position. Now here's the return opportunity for Hasbrook Heights and a nice return out past the 30 yard line. As it's going to be number nine, Rocco Minigola, 
making the return, and it's going to be first down and 10 for Hasbrook Heisen, the first time that we see the Aviators' offense check onto the field. Here this evening, led by their quarterback, Spencer Lee. 568 passing yards, five touchdowns, one interception on the season. It's four for five with 49 yards in the semifinal win against Park Ridge. So Lee and company, an offense averaging just over 35 points a contest. Check out on the field for the first time. The dangerous Josiah Purdy lining up, split to the near side. They're looking for him in the slot. Catches it in stride. No one's going to catch Purdy. And what a response for Hasbrook Heights. Touchdown, Aviators. They found him in space, Scott, and he did the rest. A touchdown for one of the best players in Hasbrook Heights history. Well, Josiah Purdy, we said in the open, is a multi-dimensional back. He can play every position. Coach Nick DeCalzo told us before the game, he can line up in the backfield. He can come out, make catches, use that upfield speed, untouched. Perfectly led Spencer Lee, leads Purdy perfectly. And he's able to go the distance. Big play for Hasbrook Heights. Only the sixth touchdown through the air this season for Hasbrook Heights. As Purdy gets the score, a penalty flag thrown before the attempted extra point. As it's going to be a penalty against Rutherford in lining up. But Josiah Purdy, his fourth receiving score of the season. And in the blink of an eye, Hasbrook Heights gets their first lead of the evening here at home. As they try to realign his extra point attempt. As Hasbrook Heights trying to tack on another one. Again, a huge play through the air. One play, it's all took for the Aviators to get on the board. And the extra point is up. And the extra point is good. And it's 7 to 3, Hasbrook Heights, with 6.52 left to go here in the first quarter of play. Well, you talk about a fast answer. It didn't take very long. And so far, we've seen two teams both be able to establish themselves moving the football. And this was perfect play calling. The linebackers were spread out, left the middle of the field wide open. And Birdie, Birdie was able to exploit that. And Purdy, 66 yards to the house. And it was interesting also, Scott, in seeing that play when it happened with Spencer Lee. He kind of moved forward even before he threw it to kind of freeze that defense, thinking he might be going with a quarterback keeper himself. And that split second allowed Purdy to break free. So, wow, if you're the Rutherford defense, a defense that does not really give up that many points on the season, a little shell-shocked in the early goings in that first play to the one player that they definitely were circling on their game plan to stop. But, and I think who you really thank here is the Hasbro Heights defense able to stop Rutherford down inside the 10 on three consecutive plays, forcing them to kick a field goal and then allow your offense to come out. And boy, just talk about exploiting them right away. As you mentioned, 21 combined points in last year's final already. We've accounted for 10 combined points with 6.52 left to go in the first. So now Rutherford will receive it. The first one bounced off the returner's hands into the end zone for a touchback. Guzman will get it back to the 25. First down and 10 for Rutherford in their second offensive series. We saw a lot of, like you said, a balanced attack there for Rutherford in their opening drive. A lot more passing opportunities than we expected coming to this one for Russell. I have to wonder if they're going to try to really get the ball even more so into the hands of Mendez, number one. Well, especially in the open field, you have to look for Mendez. And don't forget, you got Justin Finelli, who could run the football also. He's another one with over 500 combined yards and, and three touchdowns. First down and 10 for Rutherford, trailing 7-3. to three. Both teams scoring their opening offensive series. Here's Mendez, strung out a little bit. Eventually moves back to the original line of scrimmage, maybe even falls forward. There is a penalty flag behind the play from Jerry Picasso. Ochoa on the tackle. We'll check the marker. As we await his call, personal, personal foul, foul against Hasbro Heights might have been a face mask there as they were trying to bring Mendez down. 
Uh, you don't want to give up easy, easy yardage like that. And here's a team that's moving the football extremely well, and to just hand them over 15 yards, you know. But you know, sometimes a penalty is not a bad thing. You got a guy like Mendez who is about to break one. If the only thing you can do is somehow bring him down, then that's what you got to do. Mendez already five carries for 51 yards on the grounds here in the first quarter. This team trails seven to three. Big handoff, play action across the middle, lofted, and nearly intercepted by Asbrook Heights. And who else? It's like Jaseya Purdy made the offensive touchdown, nearly making the defensive play. And he's a do-it-all kind of player. You know, I hate when quarterbacks have to throw off the back foot, but this is a strong kid in Kyle Russell. But, you know, Purdy comes out, and he is just a tremendous athlete. He's getting some D1 looks. You know, he's looking at some one A double A schools. I mean, this is going to be a kid that that could that will play at the next level. Second down and ten after the incompletion. Ball at the 40 yard line of Rutherford. Russell will throw it out to the near side to Mendez. So dangerous in the open field down the Hasbrook Heights near sideline. And a nice job of Russell oh, selling that play as he looked like he was going to run and then threw it to the near side to the capable number one Mendez. Now, I like the play calling here. It's like an option, just an overhead option. That's actually a complete pass right there. And he's able to get the ball to the outside. And what I love what he does there is Mendez switches the football to his left hand, protecting the football. First down of the play, moving the ball into Hasbrook Heights territory for the second time this evening. First down and 10 for the Rutherford Bulldogs. Just over six minutes left to go in this first quarter of play. It's going to be a screen to the near, or to the far side, excuse me. Again, Mendez makes the first man miss. There is a flag behind the play as Mendez will run into the end zone untouched. But again, there's a penalty flag on the far side as it was the bubble screen to the far side, and Hasbrook Heights is trying to wave it back. The penalty will negate this touchdown. And you know, everyone saw it. You saw him put his hands up in the air after he made that block. And you know, sometimes you know you did something wrong. You just you just duck away. You don't put your hands like, no, 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 it wasn't me. So Rutherford was trying to respond with a long play from their star player of their own, but it's called back with a penalty. And, and we'll take a look. He's able to get the ball to the outside. He's showing us no problem getting to the edge today. And then once he gets that upfield speed, he is so quick. And then here it comes. And you know, just missed it on the top of your screen. But, uh, you know, you got that block in the back. Last year, Mendez in this title game, 114 yards rushing on the ground. A touchdown also had a receiving score. He's accounted for all the points for Rutherford in that 14-7 overtime win. Guzman gets the handoff. And after the penalty, it's moved back into Rutherford territory. So Guzman will get it up to about the 45-yard line after his first down and 17. Larman making the tackle for Hasbrook Heights up front. Second down and 16. And we've seen some explosive plays in the open field already against these two defenses that are not used to giving up big plays. Now Rutherford coach Andy Howell still has to continue to find ways to get the ball to Mendez right at the edge and let him use that athleticism and his breakout speed. Only a pickup of one on first down, second and 16. Russell rolling the pocket to the near side. Here's another screen play to Mendez. And Mendez is brought down for a tackle. Number 58, Teo Choa, the linebacker, the 6'1 junior making the stop. And you go going against the grain, and he just wants to get rid of it at this time. Good job getting it out to Mendez. He just in traffic, nowhere to go. Ochoa coming off a six-tackle performance in the semifinal win against Park Ridge. 6'1", 190-pound junior. We'll see time on the defensive line as well as in the linebacking core where he stands right now. So third down and 19 for Rutherford. His drive had moved the ball into Hasbrook Height territory. But now with a couple of big penalties going against them, they're moving backwards on this drive. Russell throwing it, intercepted! Hasbrook Heights gets the turnover. It's Purdy. He's doing everything here in this championship game. Well, so far this quarter, 
I don't think there's anything that Purdy can't do. We haven't seen him throw the football yet. But wow, just a terrific job. And he almost had that pick earlier. But this time he's able to step right in. Pretty easy for him. He's able to make the read and put, uh, put Hasbrook Heights in great field position. Zaya Purdy with the interception. And the senior putting his team on his back here in the first quarter of play. And now they're threatening for another score deep in Rutherford territory. First down and 10 for Hasbrook Heights. Ball spotted at the 24 yard line. They'll line up with the trips wide receivers to the top of your screen. Lee who accounted for the 66 yard touchdown slant to Purdy on the first play for this offense. He gets pressured and Lee will be brought down for a sack on the play. As it looks like Nick Ippolito number 52 credited with the sack in the backfield. He was looking for Purdy there too. Purdy was open for that split second but you know you don't get that extra two seconds time to drop back plant that back foot. He had nowhere to go. So second down and 11 after the one yard loss on first down for Hasbrook Heights. They're leading seven to three here in the latter stages of the first quarter at home. Just forced a turnover. Now it's a pitch play. Robertson to the far side and Robertson came into the game one yard shy of 600 yards on the ground this season. We'll get a minimal pickup there setting up third down and long for Heights. As we take a look at the Aviators offensive starters, Ochoa, Lorman, Ataglia, Tibbolts, and Marino on the line. Robertson, who just got that carry along with Purdy, Rinky, Calhoun, and Vera. For an offense scoring 35.7 points per game this season. Third and ten. Lee. Jump ball, Purdy behind his defender, touchdown with one hand. Oh my, Josiah Purdy, have yourself a day. He just continues to impress, and we still have 2.40 left to go in this game. Just an amazing play. They were looking for him on that last play. Just no time for Spencer Lee. But this time, he's able to get that step. If Purdy gets that one step on you, forget it. You lead him, he's going to catch it. But watch this. One hand uses his outside hand. He doesn't even just catch it. He palms it. He grips it. And he pulls it in. And he does that against great coverage man-to-man -man from Mendez, the star player for Rutherford. Josiah Purdy has both of Hasbrook Heights touchdowns and the interception on defense that set him up nicely. And the extra point is good for Matthew Grish. And Josiah Purdy with a 66-yard touchdown catch, adding now to a 24-yard touchdown reception. And it's all Josiah Purdy in the title game. Oh, and did we mention that he's a running back? And look what he's doing out there. That is just an amazing, he didn't even corral it. He just gripped it into his palms. Those are some big hands, folks. He just ripped it in. Making it look awfully easy here so far. As he definitely had that bad taste in his mouth from last season's game. He's talking about that leading up to tonight's championship final. Trying to make amends and here on his home turf. He's certainly done his part on both sides of the football, staking his team out to an early 14-3 lead. You know, I used to make those kind of catches too when I was younger. But oh, we, I bet. But we had a thing called stick them. And, <laughs> and I remember dropping the ball a few times. And I was a quarterback. But when I played tight end, I had trouble holding on to the football. And I remember my father was the coach. He would spray my hand down. This is going back in the 70s now. And I remember everything you would hit would stick to those hands. Does not need stick them there with his gloves. Very impressive. The big hands there making it look easy. And now Rutherford, after opening up on a scoring drive and leading three to nothing, have seen 14 unanswered points for Hasbrook Heights. 
as Guzman returns it out beyond the 25-yard line, and Rutherford and the Bulldogs on offense will take over for the third time here in the first quarter. And you know, it's funny. You look at the score. It's 14-3. to You think that this game's uh, looking towards like a blowout, and absolutely not. This is a Rutherford team who's moving the football on every possession. Keep in mind, that first drive, they took it down inside the 10 and had to settle for a field goal. They moved the ball good the second drive just through the interception. This is a team that is going to continue to move the football the entire game. And as you mentioned at the beginning of our broadcast, Scott, it's Rutherford, the side this year, that's coming in with the 18-game win streak, just as Hasbrook Heights had that last season. On first down, it's going to be a jet sweep as the handoff is to Regan Landrigan, his first carry of the night. Lorman with the tackle again. He's been active as defensive tackle position so far in the early goings on defense. Again, if you're just joining us, fans, Rutherford marched down the field in their opening drive, but were held to just a short field goal. Then Hasbrook Heights struck on their first offensive play, a 66-yard touchdown pass to Josiah Purdy. Purdy added an interception, and then most recently, a highlight reel one-handed touchdown, and Hasbrook Heights leads 14-3. On second down, Russell, great job there for the QB, all the way down past midfield and burrowing his way past the defender into Hasbrook Heights territory. Best run of the night for number seven in white, Kyle Russell. Well, Russell does a nice job here out of the shotgun, faking it. I think everybody thought, thought Finelli was getting the football, and he's able to make that run lower his head. There's some good hard nose runners out here today. Russell with his best run of the evening again coming into tonight's game. Just under 120 yards on the ground this season with one touchdown. And for the third time in this first quarter, Scott, Rutherford has entered into Heights territory. Quick hitter on the far side. Good coverage on the play by Zahir Jenkins making the tackle after the completion went over to Eugene Kim, number five. Well, the last three plays, man, Mendez still hasn't touched the football yet. You know five, it's about Mendez time. Five. It's definitely, you know that Hasbro Kites, their game plan is to zero in on where number one is at all times. He's going to be lined up to the top of your screen right now as a wide receiver as Russell's in the pistol set. There'll be a handoff instead. and. Stacked up on the play by Hasbro Heights short of the first down as Finelli got the handoff, his first carry of the evening. As we're under, coming up on 30 seconds left to go in this opening quarter of play. Quarter, quarter dominated by Hasbro Heights. As Andy Howe looking at the sticks, seeing how much more his team needs here to continue this drive. Third down and short. Both teams undefeated here in 2018, 7-0 marks. This is the final game of the regular season before they both embark on their respective sectional playoffs. And off on third and short enough for a first down for Mendez who gets the carry for the first time in that drive. And that'll be the final play of this explosive first quarter. A quarter that has been dominated by number three in black and orange, Josiah Purdy. A man on your screen there getting some help and he's certainly been delivering the boom for his side in that first quarter. Accounting for the two touchdowns on the night and that walk in the gem for the Indians. Heights on top of Rutherford, 14 and three here on Verizon Files One Sports. The fans are out in numbers here to support their respective sides in the 2018 NJIC Championship Final. Hasbrook Heights on top. They're trying to enact revenge after losing in overtime last year, 14 to three. And then coach Nick Del Calzo has to be thrilled at how his team played in that first quarter, seven and zero in the season. And they defeated Park Ridge 30 to 14 in the last time in the semis leading up to tonight's game. An explosive offense producing 14 first quarter points. Russell will have an open man across the middle of the field, enough for a first down inside the 20, close to the 15 yard line. As Landrigan was his receiving target and makes his fifth catch of the season. And this is what we talked about earlier. Kyle Russell, when you give this young man a little time, he's going to be able to step back, make the pass, and just find Landrigan wide open in the center of the field. Landrigan, a senior. 
And four catches for 40 yards in a game earlier this season against Manchester Regional. First down and 10. The second time this evening that Rutherford has entered into the red zone. They only came away with three points in their opening drive. There's a handoff to Guzman. Powers way past the 10 yard line. The right side takes it across on first down. Nice pick up there on the ground for Guzman. Anthony Marino on the tackle. Marino credited with the stop for Heights. And again, what really short circuited that opening scoring drive was that motion penalty against Rutherford, and it made it second down and goal from about the seven instead of being at the two. We'll see if they can convert here. Quick hitter to the near side. Mendez makes the first man miss. Gallops his way into the end zone for the touchdown. And your highlight players are coming up big here in the championship game. That time it was Mendez with a touchdown catch, pulling Rutherford back within 14 to 9. Well, one thing's for certain, Rutherford's controlling the clock in this game. And they used and they made some great adjustments here. I mean, a couple good passes, some nice runs, and Mendes get the ball in the capable hands of Mendez. And, and he'll break one for you. Good block in front of him, delivered by Kim as Mendez will do the holding. Or Sullivan, who is, already has one field goal here this evening. Nice snap, the hold, and the kick is up. And the extra point is good. And Rutherford with a big response after that highlight reel one-handed touchdown by Josiah Purdy of Hasbrook Heights just before the end of the first quarter. It's Mendez coming up big with the receiving score. Oh, well, you're able to fake it to the big guy, get the ball out quickly, and Mendez is so quick and elusive, able to get to the end zone. That ability to make the first man miss in space is what makes Mendez so dangerous in a 72-yard scoring drive, just what Coach Andy Howe would want from his team. And now we said that before, you have to be able to wrap him up at the line of scrimmage. You let him get past that initial contact. He is so tough to bring down. For his career, Mendez coming into tonight's game, 2,424 total yards of offense, 33 touchdowns, and now his 10th all-time receiving score. And just like his counterpart, Purdy, he could be dangerous in the backfield. He could be dangerous split out to space. And both players also have attempted a couple of passes this year. And, and I want to tell you, go back to last year's NJIC. They're going to score more points than they did last year. It was a 14-7 game already. They have. They're going to put up big numbers. I'm telling you, 35 is going to take to win this game today. 14-10 to here tonight at Hasbrook Heights as the Aviators allowing their first touchdown of the, of the Knights here in this 2018 NJIC championship game. And a big response there as certainly all momentum in the game was on Hasbrook Heights side. But a couple of big completions for Kyle Russell who also had a big run at the tail end of that first quarter to keep the drive going. As Heights will receive the kick inside their own 15 yard line. Another nice return there for the Aviators Robinson out beyond the 30. The as Robertson was the man who returned the kick for Hasbrook Heights in the offense, which has been perfect so far, will come back onto the fields. And that man, Josiah Birdie, with two receiving scores in the first quarter. Well, you got to find an answer for Purdy. And right now, I can be honest, not many teams have found that, you know, two receptions for 90 yards, two touchdowns. I mean, that's. Just an amazing job for this young man. And, you know, he has so much speed in the open field. This will be first down and 10. Trips wide receivers to the near side for Lee. Robertson will get the handoff. Move the pile ahead close Robertson to about the 35-yard line. That's the first down run. Robertson with five rushing scores on the season. Had a big performance in the semifinals against Park Ridge. 127 yards rushing and a touchdown against the Owls that evening. Second down and seven after the three-yard pickup on first down. Birdie is lined up to the top of your screen. Again, with two receiving scores in that first quarter. Robertson bouncing it to the far right side. It'll be a third and short situation upcoming for Heights after that second down run by their junior tailback. And taking a look at the defensive starters for the Rutherford Bulldogs. 
up front. It's Fisher, Melfa, Avramitis, and Ippolito. Hennessy, Gaeta, and Landrigan, the linebackers. Mendez, Cruz, Duran, Duran, excuse me, Finelli, and Guzman in the secondary. We've seen Mendez taking on Purdy. We'll see if that's going to be a matchup again in the secondary. On third down, here's Purdy in the Wildcat. Third down and four. Trying to break it to the near left side. Makes a couple of men miss, but great hustle to the ball. But that extra effort by Purdy at the end might have got him enough for the first down. And we'll see where the spot is of that play. But it looks like, Scott, that Purdy was going to be marked short, but it's just the will and the effort there by the senior getting him close to this first down. You know, this is why it's so important, you know, especially in high school football, to wrap up. I mean, you watch Sundays in the NFL, you even see the same thing. People are going to tackle with their heads or, you know, try to knock him down with the body you have to be able to wrap up good old fashioned high school football tackling get him around the legs drive him take him down and because you didn't you might have just given up a first down and you had them you had them back in your zone what about that stiff arm that purdy displayed right away in the initial contact after getting that snap of the wildcat and it looks like purdy is just going to be mark shy fourth down and inches for hasbro heights the home crowd urging Coach DeCalzo to maybe be a gambler here, but it is on his side of the 50, and his team is up 14 to 10. I'll tell you what, I'm the coach here. You know, I'm DeCalzo, and I'm, gonna, I'm thinking about what I want to do here. I'm running for, I'm running Purdy out of, the, out of the Wildcat one more time because the way he runs the football, I think he can get those six inches. So you're being extra aggressive here. I think in a night like tonight, it's cold. Your offense is going forward. Your defense is on their heels. This young man, look what he's done to get this far. Run him out of the Wildcat and see what you can do. Now he is lined up as potential punter as he serves as the team's punter as well. Well, Hasbrook Heights elect to go for it here on fourth and inches, their side of the 40. They will. A handoff to Purdy. And it will be enough for a first down aggressive play call there by Coach DeCasso. He follows in what you said and put the ball in your best player's hands. And, and, you know, I don't even know if you call it aggressive. I think you just call it smart football. You know, this is <clears throat> when you got a, you got the person that can do this, you, you, you run with them. And Purdy's just been on top of the night. And, you, you know, you, you go with the people that are hot. And right now he has been doing it all offensively and defensively. So a timeout taken by Rutherford after that fourth down conversion by Josiah Purdy. One man wrecking crew right now in this first half for coach Nick DeCalzo's Hasbrook Heights Aviators, a team that is appearing in the third consecutive NJIC championship game. This is the third edition of this championship that features all the four divisions in this conference. They won it a couple of years ago against Pompton Lakes, lost the heartbreaker at Rutherford against the Bulldogs. They're trying to get back on top before the sectional playoffs. And that Pompton Lakes team was very, very good. That's what we've covered them so many years on Verizon Fios. And, you know, there's just something about coming out and watching the small school football when they play each other. It really is big time action. And it's a great venue here tonight for Hasbro Heights playing host to this 2018 NJIC championship game. Dan Long, Scott Green, happy that you could join us here on Verizon Fios 1 Sports for championship football in the Garden State. Both teams perfect 7-0 on the season. They each won their respective sectional championships last year at MetLife Stadium after this game, but Rutherford finished the undefeated season. Robinson on first the down. Side, it it's going to be Robertson bouncing into the tackle. far side as Hennessy, Ryan Hennessy, the outside linebacker for Rutherford, making the stop. And it's nice to have that luxury of a player like Robertson, who's been so dynamic this year, Seven over 600 yards four. on the grounds. And then you can go From to a Purdy sometimes as a Wildcat or just as the regular tailback when he's not as a wide receiver. A nice compliment to have in the backfield. Purdy in the slot to the bottom of your screen. As Spencer Lee awaits the snap. Toss play to Robertson to the near side. Nice in and out move there by Robertson. Another first down for Hasbrook Heights and moving the ball once again into Rutherford territory. Robertson showed some nice cut up speed there and he's able to take that pitch to the outside and watch this. He's able to cut to the inside, quick cutting action. I like him, nice runner. 
Again, 127 yards and a touchdown in the semifinals against Park Ridge to get to this championship. Also had a 171-yard performance along with two touchdowns and a win against Creskill. Four times this season, Robertson has eclipsed the century mark on the ground. On first down, it's going to be Purdy with the jet sweep to the near side. Upended on the play by a couple of Bulldogs, including Landrigan making the stop. As well as Jack Melfa, number 55. Tackle by Ippolito and Gaeta. As Purdy has had a big first down conversion on fourth down in inches and certainly struck for those long touchdown passes. Second including the eight. first offensive play of the night for Hasbro Heights after they were trailing three to nothing. And you'd expect Scott, number three, just like his counterpart, number one in white and Mendez, they're never going to leave the field here tonight. No, not at all. You get to a game like this, they, 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 no, no, there's no such thing as sitting. Here's another long play down the field through the air for Hasbro Heights, dizzying his way into the end zone. Touchdown! A team that doesn't throw it all that often. Well, Hasbro Heights striking for three touchdowns through the air. That time, Ian Rinke accounting for the score, and Heights once again back up by 10. You know, you, you watch a guy, this reminds you of like a Gronkowski type play. You go down, you make the catch, you see the defense, er, stop, let them go past you, and then you come into the inside. Against four white jerseys. Outstanding. A touchdown through the air. Now three touchdowns passing for Hasbro Heights in this first half of play. They had five total on the season coming into tonight's action as Rinky being attended to by the training staff after that score. And the Aviators will tag on another extra point. 21 to 10. This Hasbro Heights offense has come to play in the 2018 NJIC championship game, and Rutherford still looking for that answer on defense. You know, and th this is Spencer Lee, who's only thrown the ball 43 times on the season. He only has 552 yards on the season, but you know what? He's having a night tonight, and what a catch for Ian Rinker. As he brings it all the way down for the score, and an answer right away for Hasbrook Heights, a 68-yard scoring drive that just lasted over four minutes in duration. A 41-yard touchdown reception for Ricky. And Heights, each time they've possessed it on offense here in the first half, have ended with seven points. Three touchdowns through the air in this first half, and Rutherford has yet to stop them when it's mattered most. They had that fourth and inches situation, couldn't make the stop, and once again, the secondary being victimized here through the air by the Aviators. Uh, we, we said both these teams have uh, have outstanding offenses, and, and I think we've seen a little bit of both from each side. But, you know, now you get in a position where you have to continue to match scores. You know, and, and now here's where with Rutherford, they can't fall behind anymore. They have to continue to put points on the board because both teams have shown they could pretty much score at will. Weish will be kicking off after, again, he's three for three in PATs here tonight. And for this game that we came into this one, Scott, thinking they're two running teams, it's four receiving touchdowns in the game. That squib kick bounced off a Rutherford player, and eventually the Bulldogs will fall on top of it to recover. And, boy, what would have been a disastrous play there. Lee, perfect on the night. Three for three for 131 yards and three touchdowns. So if you're only going to throw it three times and you have Three for three with three scores. That's a pretty good first half of play that, for the that, sophomore. Now that's efficiency there. You know, that's productive passes. And Rutherford trying to avoid what would be their first loss of the season, a perfect 7-0, scoring just over 38 points a game and currently that long win streak on the season. It's an 18 game win streak. First down, it's going to be Mendez bouncing it to the outside. A flag throws behind the play. Mendez takes it around right hand. Jenkins on the stop. So a penalty flag was thrown behind the play. As they were bouncing it to the near side, and it will be a hold call against Rutherford negating that play and that pickup on first down for Mendez. Howell looking down 
at his tablet where he gets to see the replay of all the plays throughout the game, almost like an NFL or college game. Trying to make that adjustment as he talks things over and his team trying to respond here. Ten points so far in this first half as Hasbrook Heights has had their way offensively. Rutherford did score in their last drive. Stacking up the inside up the as Guzman was the man who got the carry. Well, you hate to give up yardage, especially Morgan on a Dows, nice run. Morgan and, and you know, this is a situation where now you want to just keep looking to try to get the ball to Mendez, and he, and he needs to try to break one. On second down and long now, again, after the penalty and the minimal pickup there on first down, it's going to be second down and 20 for Rutherford deep in their own end. 21 to 10, the deficit that they face here in the second quarter on a chilly night in Hasbrook Heights, New Jersey. Russell back to pass, fires that one, intercepted again! The second interception of this first half for Hasbrook Heights, and reading the eyes was Mateo Ochoa, forcing the second turnover for this defense. Uh, Cho has been the big guy in the middle so far all night long and you know Kyle Russell goes back he goes to he throws to try to fire that bullet but just a good job I mean I, you saw exactly where he was looking he had his eyes on the target the whole time but you know he just Cho just steps right in. So now Hasbrook Heights Scott has forced another turnover have gotten the ball back to their offense that's been perfect three for three in scoring drives tonight. And they have a chance to deliver another big play here and really put Rutherford behind the eight ball. Lee again, as we mentioned, perfect this evening, three for three, and all three of his completions going for touchdowns. Jet sweep to Purdy. Again, an exceptional job of making that initial man miss, but Rutherford doing a good job of getting several hats to the ball. You know, if Hasbrook Heights could put up another score here before the half, and you, you start to really take a lot of steam out of Rutherford. And like I said, by, by no means are we calling this game. Rutherford's an explosive team. They could put up 35 points just like that. But, uh, you know, this is, uh, you know, a couple of these turnovers are, are very, very crucial, especially if you start getting points off these turnovers. And also you have to factor in that Hasbrook Heights deferred the opening kick, so they'll be receiving to start the second half of play. There's another handoff to the near side. Robertson, Robertson as a flag side, flies the near the, the tail play. end Check of that play. Stopping the clock with 4.34 left to go here in the second quarter. On the stop. The Will be a penalty though marked off aviators. against Hasbrook Heights. So that will negate that run for Robertson to the near side. And we'll move the ball back on second down. The replay second down as Coach Nick DeCalzo. He's looking for what would be his 249th career coaching victory. Has led the Aviators, his high school alma mater, to four sectional titles, including last season. And they look like they are in a strong position here to win another sectional title and even cap it off with a conference title here tonight. A lot of pressure brought down for a sack. A big play there defensively for Rutherford when they needed it. It's number 61, Lawson Fisher, the senior, with a huge play setting up third down and a country mile upcoming. For Hasbrook Heights. I'll uh, give Lawson Fisher four and a half sacks on the season. He's able to come through. He couldn't get rid of the ball in time, and and this is called Just wrapping him up, holding on. And that's a big time play. If you have music, you have about so after minutes. it was going to be second down deep in Rutherford territory with the penalty, and now with the ensuing sack, the ball is being moved closer and closer back to midfield for Hasbrook Heights here on third and long. Well, this is a big play here, and, and there's no question this is four down territory you know, for Hasbrook Heights. Purdy is going to be matched up with Mendez, your two highlight players, Scott, at the bottom of your screen. Will be a handoff right up the middle. Rutherford completely fooled. Robertson going all the way down. Enough for a first down. What a play there called by Coach DeCalzo on third and 24. Robertson up the gut. Enough for a first down. First and goal upcoming. Well, you know, I think that was perfect. Sometimes you use Purdy as a decoy. You know, a good job handing off right away to Robertson. Robertson able to use that cut up speed we talked about. 
Big gain for Hasbrook Heights. The seas parted there, the second and third levels. And as Robertson was all by his lonesome, going right down the field, enough for a first down and first and goal upcoming for Hasbrook Heights. Again, who have been perfect on their three possessions on offense prior to this one, ending in touchdowns. And they're in a good position here to maybe go four for four against a Rutherford defense that definitely is on its heels in this first half of action. So far, Michael Robertson's been very impressive, you know, taking that ball and you know, his ability to cut and get to the open Tied spot and get upfield. As Hasbro Kites will run the clock down a bit before taking a timeout to stop things with 2.42 left to go. And Robertson on his way to maybe another 100 plus rushing performance, seven carries for 63 yards. As Hasbro Heights trying to enact revenge after losing in this championship game against Rutherford on the road at Rutherford last season. And it was a dramatic game that went back and forth. And both teams were undefeated coming into the action. Again, it was hosted by Rutherford. Hasbrook Heights got an early lead in the game. Rutherford with Mendez getting on the board for his first touchdown of the evening. That made it seven all, and that's where it stood for the majority of this game. We went to overtime. Mendez with a 13-yard receiving touchdown. That proved to be the difference. And then Rutherford closed it out with a huge interception in the end zone. And that was courtesy of Tyler Aponte. That sealed the historic victory, the first ever NJIC championship for Rutherford, who then went on to win the sectional championship, ending a 51-year school touchdown and a championship drought. Uh, Andy House on a great job building this program and getting them, you know, back to to statewide prominence. And you know, he he, he does it. He, he has a lot of good good players. He doesn't have the five great players he has so many good players so after the timeout Spencer Lee getting the thumbs up he'll run the play first and goal Purdy stacked up but again pushing the pile forward Rutherford doing a good job of stringing it outside and forcing Purdy down to the turf will be second and goal upcoming for Heights as the clock again continues to tick down and as I mentioned Scott it's a big point of this game not only if Hasbro Heights can extend their lead with another touchdown here but you have to think of the back of the mind too. coach DeCalzo knows his team is going to be getting the ball to start the second half and this is where they could really get some breathing room. Yeah this is this is big for Hasbro Heights they can give themselves a nice cushion going into halftime. Second and goal. Purdy set up in the Wildcat looking over to his sideline before the play. Birdie, the jump pass, alone in the end zone, touchdown, Hasbrook Heights. Four receiving touchdowns for the Aviators, almost totaling what they had on the entire season. And a trick play there, works to perfection. It's all Aviators here in the first half of play. Sean Calhoun with his first receiving score of the season off the touchdown pass from Purdy. Well, just a nice job here. All right, a little Brett Favre action, jumping up and tossing it. They're just finding a way to score in every possession. And as we said, Purdy doing a little bit of everything, this time with the throwing Leon touchdown. Fugleish. Well, we said before, what, what else can Josh Purdy do? I, I mean, we talked about his ability defensively on his pick. You know, then we talked about his ability to catch the ball, he run the ball, now throw the ball. Extra point is good at Hasbrook Heights. Perfection here in the first half on offense. Four scoring drives, all ending in seven points. Sean Calhoun, the recipient of the four-yard touchdown pass from Josiah Purdy. And Purdy with two receiving scores, an interception, and one touchdown thrown here in the first half. What else can he do? Maybe he'll also work the concession stands here on this busy, cold night. I'll tell you. He might come up and join us in the booth. You know? uh, I would not be surprised if he starts it, calling a little it, better game. If he comes up here, can he maybe bring like, like, like a hot coffee? Or? Uh, he's a red hot player right now. <laughs> he would definitely bring some warmth up here. As it has been all Hasbro Heights here in the first half. And Josiah Birdie getting the adulation from his teammate Spencer Lee on the bench. That's the only time he hasn't been doing anything, just being on the bench. And Rutherford, a team that has not been behind in this type of fashion in quite some time with their long win streak in serious jeopardy here, trailing 28 to 10 and Purdy doing everything on offense and defense for his Aviator squad. 
And now, how key is this last possible possession on offense, Scott, for Rutherford in the first half? You don't want to obviously have a quick three and out to maybe get the ball back to this explosive Hasbro Kites offense. Yeah, you have to be very careful here, but you can't play on the defensive side. You have to attack. You've been able to move the football. You control the clock the whole first quarter. You know, th this is a time where, hey, you got to put the ball in the hands of Mendez, let him do some damage, and, and let him work. Another squib kick taken by Rutherford, but the player who fielded it had his knee down already. So that will negate the return attempt for Cruz Duran. Will be first down and 10 for Andy Howell's Rutherford Bulldogs with 1.44 left to go here in the second quarter of play. Rutherford marched, Rutherford marched down the field in that opening drive of the night. Had to settle for a field goal, but ever since then, it's been Hasbrook Heights dominating in this game. How does Rutherford get back that momentum in this one? Well, you know, they, they've been able to move the football. They just have to be able to tell themselves defensively is where the question and concern is coming in. Russell has thrown one touchdown, but also two interceptions in the first half. Goes to that sideline pass right in front of his own team. As Kim gets another reception here in the first half, and a first down for Rutherford close to midfield. So both teams that have more of a rushing identity, they've been airing it out here on this cool and windy evening. The difference has been the two turnovers forced by Hasbrook Heights' defense. Screen play, Guzman makes the first man miss. Pass midfield into Hasbrook Heights territory as he rumbles all the way down inside the 35-yard line. will be marked down to the 32. You know, and if you're Hasbrook Heights, you don't want to go into like a prevent style defense and get very complacent with a minute 22 left to go. You know, the last thing you want to do is let Rutherford put something on the board and go into the locker room with some momentum. Two big gainers on the first two plays of this last drive of the first half. As Rutherford still with all three of their timeouts. Screen pass to the near side to Mendez, and Mendez again makes the first two would be defenders miss before Jenkins trips him up the play, but not before he gets inside the 30 to about the 28. Looks like a timeout is going to be taken by Rutherford. Rutherford will stop the clock with 59 seconds left to go and a second and five facing them, but. Great start to this drive just when they desperately needed some points before halftime. Three big plays to start off this offensive series. And still plenty of time to try to put something on the board. You can see anyhow, just a cool customer and talking to him even before the game. You could tell that his team follows his lead and his personality and he's led this team obviously ending that 51 year drought of a championship. They are a confident bunch even trailing here by 18. He's very confident that his offense can get them right back on the board. And this would be such a clutch score, especially if they could find a way into the end zone just before halftime. Yeah, you know, you got to love Andy Howell. I mean, what he does with his kids, and you just see him in the huddle there. You're trailing by 18 points, and, and he's, he's smiling. He's keeping his team positive. You know, everything is a reflection on the coach. You know, if you come in and you're getting up tight and over overexcited, the kids are going to follow suit. You know, and I think this is the experience that he brings to this Rutherford program. So after the timeout, they'll reset the clock to 103 left to go in the second quarter. Second down and five facing the Bulldogs. And the Heights side of the field, and that pass a little miscommunication after the wide receiver stopped their routes and just overthrown. Russell really walloped on the play. Behind the play as Griskowitz was the intended target. Well, this is this is what you call bringing it Hasbrook Heights. They were blitzing from all angles full all out rush and they were able to get to the backfield and and hurry up that uh, hurry up that pass. After the incompletion it will remain third down and five ball spotted the near hash of the 28. Mendez will be lined up to the slot to the top of your screen left. You'd have to think maybe for Rutherford, this might be four down territory as well. Russell backing up, setting up the screen. Nice one handed catch secured nicely by Rutherford and upended on the play, but enough for a first down. Justin Finelli with a big grab there on the screen pass. Uh, he also took a big hit, too. And, you know, that's a nice grab. Gets that one hand up in the air. And, you know, but here he comes. And what, what a big hit there. Holds on to the football as well. First down and 10 for Rutherford. The clock begins to tick down under 40 seconds. 
Nice completion there. A lot of contact and still holding on to the football. Riskowitz making the reception as the senior gets another first down for Rutherford. They still have two timeouts remaining. As the clock stops as they reset the chains to the far side. First and goal now for Rutherford with 30 seconds left to go in the half. Russell has his number called. Powers his way past the defense into the end zone. Touchdown. What a huge response there for the Rutherford Bulldogs answering the Hasbrook Heights score just moments ago. And capping it off with a touchdown run run from number seven, Kyle Russell, the senior QB. 2016 Aviators extra point coming up. This was just a terrific response from that Rutherford coming down in, in the two minute drill, getting into the end zone. Great job, Kyle Russell. Russell stepping up, you know that he has to be frustrated after throwing those two picks in the game, but he now has a rushing score and throwing one as well. But the extra point is blocked by who else? Number three, Josiah Purdy, making the block on the extra point. And Asbrook Heights' lead will stay at 12 at 28 to 16. A big play there on special teams for Purdy. So now he has officially done everything here in this first half of play. I think we could pretty much put every stat in there. And he just came right through and laid himself out. That's some dedication there. Sullivan didn't have a chance to even elevate that one as Purdy broke through the line full extension and made the block. But Rutherford does put up six on the board there just before halftime, courtesy of the touchdown run for that man. Kyle Russell, the six-yard touchdown run, and talk about quick work going 75 yards in seven plays and only one minute and 23 seconds coming off the clock. And you'll have to think that this is something that Coach Howe will look at certainly at halftime and how his offense can be that explosive again. Like you said, Scott, they've been moving the ball effectively against Hasbro Heights. They just haven't been able to finish the way that they've done there with Russell capping off that drive. Yeah, I mean, you think about their drives. The first one, they were able to march 80 yards down and have to settle for a field goal. Then you had two picks that stalled their drive. And, and then the other times, they were able to move the football. So, you know, this was a, this was a good half mired by a couple mistakes for Rutherford, and it's only 28-16. So we're going to be in for a great second half. 24 seconds remaining here in this first half. And again, fans, it was only 21 combined points in this matchup last season at Rutherford. Completely different story, all offense here in the first half of play. Lawson will angle this kick, but it will go out of bounds on the far Rutherford sideline, so it'll be a legal procedure called against Rutherford. Good starting field position here for Hasbrook Heights, and do they even think about possibly being aggressive here and try to go for another touchdown before the half, knowing that they received the kick to start the third quarter. Well, you know what? Hasbro Heights has been, uh, the way they've been playing, I think they're all aggressive. They've gone for it on fourth downs and 24 seconds left. Make a couple plays. You have a kid who can kick the ball. You know, I, I say you stay aggressive, especially in a championship game. He's coaching to, to Calzo, looking on from his near sideline, trying to lead his team to what would be their second NJIC championship in the last three years. So a legal procedure again on the kickoff that went out of bounds to the far side. And it'll be first down and 10 for Hasbrook Heights at their own 35 as they're waiting for a football to be brought in off of the Aviator sideline. like Hasbro Heights will be content with taking that 12-point advantage with them into the locker room here after an explosive first half of play for both offenses. Hasbro Heights scoring four times through the air. That's correct, fans, through the air for this Aviator side. We've had only one rushing touchdown between these two teams, known for their dominance on the ground. And it's 28 to 16, the lead for Hasbrook Heights in this 2018 NJIC championship game here in Hasbrook Heights, New Jersey. As Russell connected on a touchdown to Mendez to get their first touchdown. But it's been the Purdy show here in the first half. And 
leading Asbrook Heights to a lead at the break on Verizon Files One Sports. At halftime in Hasbrook Heights and the home sided Aviers on top of Rutherford by a score of 28 to 16 in this 2018 NJIC championship game. And you could say, Scott, it was a case of the Josiah Purdy show in the first half of action. Well, Purdy right away, first play of the game, able to take 66 yards to the house, showing off that speed. And, you know, this was just a sample of what was yet to come. And, you know, it was the Purdy show. You know, defensively, he's able to step up quickly, make the pick, takes it down, and then off one of their turnovers, able to put it in the end zone. Now, how about this? Is Beckham Jr. in the house? Because he just reached up and grabbed it with one hand. Didn't even hurl it in one hand. He just palmed it. And then back the other way, Rutherford never gave up. They just kept on going and, you know, fighting their way into the end zone and making plays happen. And once again, this time, Ranky able to haul it in and score. So this was just all, this was all Hasbrook. And then we talk about what else does he do? How about throwing the football? This time from three yards out, he's able to step up, toss the ball, and throw the ball in the end zone. So what a first half for Purdy. And then not giving up Rutherford in the final two minute drive. Kyle Russell taking it in, giving Rutherford some momentum into half 28 16. And taking a look at the stats from the first half of play, despite losing on the scoreboard, Rutherford having the betterment of this in terms of the stat category, but again, those two turnovers so costly. Yeah, the two turnovers were big because they were able to score off both those turnovers, and that's the difference in the game, because otherwise, Rutherford controlled the clock the whole game, I mean, 14 minutes, time of possession. Very even in the passing, uh, rushing, they've, they've exceeded total yards, so really it just comes down to one thing, and that's those turnovers. So will Rutherford make those defensive adjustments to the start of the second half as we're at halftime here in Hasbrook Heights. Two quarters away from capturing their second NJIC championship in three seasons. Stick around for the second half of play coming up here on Verizon Files One Sports. Welcome back here, the start of the third quarter. Hasper Kites getting warmed up on a very chilly and windy evening of football as they're red hot in that first half, 28 to 16. And it's time for a revisit of your Verizon Fast One Sports keys of the game, Scott. Well, for Rutherford giving quarterback Russell time, they did a nice job of that. When they gave him time, he was able to execute, make some nice passes and move the football. They were able to establish the run early, get down and make some good plays. They just had those two turnovers that proved costly for Hasbrook Heights. They did a pretty good job wrapping up on Mendez. He was able to break a couple runs, and then they began to blitz, and they, they brought the ends in and then started to get after Russell in the backfield. You know, and that's been a big difference so far, but overall, it's been a great game. And Hasbrook Heights won the opening coin toss and elected to defer to receive this ball to begin the second half of play. Which made that last touchdown for Rutherford all the more important. But now it's going to be a case here in the second half. The Bulldog defense has to step up and find a way to slow down this offense for the Aviators that was clicking on all cylinders in that first half of action. Lawson who handles the kickoff duties here for Rutherford. Ready to kick this one away. And the second half of the 2018 NJIC Championship is underway. As Hasbrook Heights has had a couple of great returns to give Minichello them good the field position. As Minichello what a nice return there in the first quarter of play. Once again, pushes the pile forward. And Hasbrook Heights will start on offense begin this third quarter. And we saw a lot of number three on your screen in that first half of play. I don't know if he could replicate what he produced in the first 24 minutes of action. Oh, we'll see if he could do it with in 10 degrees cooler temperature than it was in the first half. Yes, it was cold to begin this, this game tonight, but it has definitely gotten colder as everyone bundled up here and a huge crowd in attendance to witness these two small school powers clashing here for a conference title. Spencer Lee. A couple touchdown passes in that first half of play. Three of them. Purdy also threw one. 
Quickly throwing on the far side of Purdy on the screen pass. Out to the 40-yard line as he's still trying to move the pile before the play is whistled dead and the tackle made by Rutherford. Purdy is so tough to take down. I mean, that, he's just a strong kid. He has the strong legs. And if you're going to bring him down, you've got to take him down below the kneecaps. Purdy listed as six foot, 190 pounds as the senior, and Spencer Lee still without an incompletion on the night, four for four for 134 yards and three touchdowns. I would say that efficiency rating is is pretty high. The junior in his first year as the starting quarterback here at Hasbro Heights hasn't attempted more than nine passes in a single game this season. It's a handoff, Robertson to the near side. Good stiff arm, gets into the open field and down the sideline into Rutherford territory. And Robertson building on another big performance here this evening. You know, when you have a guy like Purdy, Robertson doesn't get a lot of the carries, but what he's doing tonight is he is making the most out of every carry that he gets an opportunity, and he's been breaking some big runs. At over 50 yards rushing in that first half of play. As Robertson again four times this season has gone over 100 yards on the ground in a game. On his way to another big performance. 89 yards on the ground and only eight carries. And once again this offense for Hasbrook Heights doing a little bit of everything through the air and also on the ground. So it looks like Robertson will have to check off the field with an equipment issue with his cleat. First down and 10 for Hasbro Heights in Rutherford territory. A late handoff and that one snuffed out quickly by Rutherford for a tackle for a loss. As Regan Landrigan, 5'7", senior, one of the captains on this team making the big defensive stop. Well, this time you try to get the ball inside of Landrigan and try to get him out there running. You know, they, they try to run that sweep numerous times. I'll tell you, if you look at the backfield, the, the middle, the, the middle of the field is open. You know, you start out the game by going to Purdy right up the middle. They haven't gone that route yet. I think if they could attack that one more time, he's right there. Purdy is lined up as wide receiver now. As he's motioning to the bottom of your screen. Two receiving touchdowns in that first half. And an interception, threw a touchdown, and also blocked an extra point. Robertson lining up to the near side. There's Lee leading him, and that's the first sign that he's off the mark as it goes off the hands of Robertson out of bounds for the incompletion. It's going to be third down and 15 and a big opportunity here for Rutherford to get that defensive stop they need. And Purdy was wide open in the middle of the field. His hands were wide open, and he was, he was holding him up, saying, hey, look at me. I'm right here. Throw me the ball. So the Bulldogs made that big play courtesy of Landrigan. From his linebacking spot for the tackle for a loss on first down. Now it's third down and 15. Rutherford did not have a stop against this offense in the first half. Screen pass to the near side. A little razzle-dazzle play as Purdy drops it off to Robertson. Makes a man miss. Enough for a first down all the way down inside the 10-yard line. And Hasbro Heights going deep into their playbook for a couple of trick plays here tonight that have worked to perfection. Uh, very impressive. And it was the perfect time to make that type of call. And you know, they throw the ball to the outside. This is just a perfect play. Everyone collapses onto Purdy. He makes the little shuffle pass. And Robertson's been running the football terrific all night long. And a couple times tonight, Scott, it's looked like Rutherford has had that man in space to make the play, just have not been able to make the defensive stop. Now, see, when you tackle up high, you're not going to make that stop. And then because of that, you gave up 25 more yards. First and goal now for Hasbro Heights, trying to start the second half like they finished the first half. Purdy but Purdy is swallowed up in the backfield. That's I Rutherford jumping to the ball as Fisher Good makes game. the first stop from his defensive end position. Avramitis also in on the tackle. Second down and goal upcoming. Actually lost With the ball now second spotted second just outside the 10-yard line to about the 11. Purdy to the slot left. Spencer Lee. 
And off to Robertson. Robertson breaks through the contain, dives ahead, stretches forward, touchdown, Hasbrook Heights. Robertson would not be denied as he broke through the middle, stretched the ball out past the goal line. And the Heights offense unstoppable here in this championship final. What a tough runner in Michael Robertson. Coming into this game, 598 yards on the ground with six touchdowns. You make it seven now, and what a big evening for this young man. A big play on that third down conversion. Almost like the hook and ladder. Lead home and then finishing it off the drive there with a touchdown right up the middle. Matthew Guish. Perfect this evening with extra points. That time, great job by the holder of holding on to the low snap that bounced a couple times. Guish sends it through with a win. And Asbrook Heights extends their lead to 35 to 16. 35, 16 and outside of that last possession that technically happened when they had to just kneel the ball to get into halftime, Hasbrook Heights, every time they've had the ball, have scored a touchdown on offense. Seven plays, 63 yards in just over three minutes time, ending with that 11-yard touchdown run by Robertson. It was just a terrific drive, and they were able to mix it up, and, and, and they loved the little razzle-dazzle play. I mean, they, you know, that's what high school football is about. This is where you get away with these things. Good little stiff arm there, and they talk about how hard Robertson can run. And then here's the trickery. Get the ball out to Purdy with the little flip. Robertson takes it down inside the 10. Just an outstanding job. And you know, when you're running the drive, you deserve to get the carry, and Robertson gets the carry into the end zone. We've seen a little razzle dazzle, obviously Purdy from the Wildcat throwing the jump pass. It was made famous a couple years ago by also Tim Tebow in college, and now Robertson over the 100 yard mark, 100 yards rushing, 30 yards receiving. He's been doing a little bit of everything as well, along with his teammate, Josiah Purdy. And if you're Coach Andy Howe, it's been a case of what if. Third down and 15, your defense has Hasbro Heights where you need them. And that trick play was the backbreaker that eventually led to the touchdown. Well, you know, defensively, you got to make a stop at some point. But offensively, you got to continue moving the football like you did in the first half. Makes it even more of a case for Rutherford. They have to score in almost every possession in the remainder of this game. Now an onside kick attempt. Rutherford with the hands team unit up top, making onside the jump on the ball. That's number Brian 33, Hennessey. Brian Hennessy, with a play to prevent the onside kick to be successful. So Hasbrook Heights still going for the jugular here, trying to finish off Rutherford, knowing how dangerous Rutherford is when they have the ball in offense. And yeah, now you give the ball in pretty good field position on a team that controlled the clock in the first half. They outrushed you. They out total number of yards on you, you know. And Kyle Russell, another terrific game, 13 for 19 in the buck and a quarter. And those two touchdowns, those two interceptions are the biggest blemish. Here's the handoff on the jet sweep to Mendez, Mendes and Mendez right maneuvers side. his way past the defense to the second Tackle level before being brought down. But into rather into Hasburg Heights territory immediately go the Bulldogs. And they worked very quickly to score that second touchdown of the first half, going 75 yards in just over a minute and 20 seconds. They know they could strike quickly here. Another handoff is to Mendez, and Mendez will move it forward. It'll be enough for a first down for the Bulldogs. Mendez going over a thousand yards rushing on the season in this game after he had a strong start to this one, especially on that opening drive. Had the receiving touchdown, but still trying to become a threat here for Coach Howell. As they try to mount a comeback against a very good Hasbrook Heights side. Here's Mendez again, the stutter, as he runs down into the open field, trying to hurdle past a defender and finally is tripped up, but not before Mendez gets it all the way down to the Heights 15. Rutherford will never be out of this game when you have a runner like Mendez. He is a game breaker. He Look how quick he is. He just keeps the feet moving, north-south runner. Rutherford going tempo to the line, quickly getting to the line for another handoff to Mendez. As they know time is up, yes, it's still plenty of time left in the second half, but based on how the Hasbro Heights offense has been operating today, they know they have to score and score in bunches quickly. Second and eight. 
Pitch play to Mendez to the far side. How does Mendez stay on his feet? There is a flag thrown behind the play. But again, un unbelievable ability as a penalty will go against Rutherford negating that run for Mendez. But in just looking at that again, Scott, every time there's a first defender, they have no chance against number one. Well, you just can't bring them down. You have to be able to wrap them up quick. But you know, a couple penalties here have negated a lot of Mendez's runs. I think that's the third penalty that negated a big run for Mendez. Owen oh, Meister called for the block in the back. Number eight on the far side, the wide receiver trying to get some space for his running back. The penalty was costly in that opening drive for Rutherford to begin this game. They marched inside the five yard line of Hasbrook Heights, but a false start penalty backed them up, and eventually they had to settle for. The Mateo Sullivan field goal. Second down and 19 after the spot of the foul. Russell backing up, trying to set up the screen. Intercepted! Once again, the third interception of the night for the Hasbrook Heights defense. And once again, it's Ochoa with his second pick. And another defensive gem for the Aviators. You know, and you look how this starts. It starts with a penalty. The penalty brings you back. You had the momentum marching down the field. You know, and then and then the steam, then the wheels fall off. And and this is one of those times. And you know, under pressure, trying to throw the ball up. That ball is actually deflected. And a nice play there from Ochoa. Initially getting a piece of it was Hasbrook Heights as he was trying to connect with Guzman on the screen pass first down and 10 after the turnover the third interception of the night and now here's an end around as Purdy sniffed out though by Rutherford they weren't falling for anything as Robertson had handed it off to his teammate but Purdy knocked in the backfield for a rare time for a loss and you know this is what I love about championship games this is the time where you unload the playbook Things that maybe you haven't run this year, you know, maybe they have, you know, they didn't see every play that they ran this year. But this is the time you unload, and you know, and you also want to perfect it because you, you, this isn't going to be your last game if you win this game here. I was going to say, this is a lot of the, the cases where you play something close to the vest all season, and like you said, you just unleash it here, and then later on, the, maybe the state finals. So after the loss of four, it's second down and 14 as the clock ticks down to about six minutes left to go here in the third. Asbrook Heights has been well in control in this one. Have been unstoppable on offense. As they let the clock run down and timeout. then at the very end, Hasbrook Heights will call for the timeout, stopping the clock with 5.53 left to go here in the third. As head coach Nick Del Calzo looking on and his quarterback has been brilliant so far in his efficiency and Asperger Heights really doing it in a different type of style than they're used to always going on the grounds and they've really been airing it out here tonight you know and they're not playing for the clock right now they're they're looking to try to put this game away and you know with every play that you know you never know what's going to be called in that huddle right now is one of the main focal points of this offense certainly here to begin the second half has been number 26 Michael Robertson who's been dynamic on the ground. Oh, Michael Robertson such a hard runner we said over 500 or close to 600 yards six touchdowns coming in hard nose north south style runner good speed good cutting action you know he's so strong I mean you look at him he looks like a wiry kid but the kid plays with a lot of finesse a lot of strength you know a play execution he tucks he runs he he doesn't turn the football over. Very special play. And after that big third down conversion, that eventually led to his score. And yeah, just a nice job. When you run that well, you deserve to get the ball around the goal line. After the timeout, it's going to be Robertson with his number called again. But he could Robinson not spin free of the tackle by Mendez, initially approached Did by Landrigan Mendes on the play. And Landrigan. So once again, Rutherford. In a do or die situation here defensively, Scott, it's going to be third down and long for Hasbrook Heights in their own territory. Rutherford has to find and a way to stop this conversion on third down to stay alive in this game. To the winner of tonight's ball game. Fans, stick around after Coach the game. Andy Howe and barking we'll the presentation the defensive the adjustments game. and Thank the play you. call from his far sideline. One of the dynamic young coaches here in northern New Jersey. One of the 
mentors of very young coaches in these parts. Coach Del Cazzo, one of the all time greats in the Garden State, approaching 250 all time wins at his high school alma mater. On third down, it's going to be a draw play. Rutherford not fooled Robertson that time as they were earlier in that first half by Robertson. And there's that stop on third down that they needed. And looks like it's going to be a punting situation upcoming for Asper Kites. Well, we haven't seen many punch yet today. Punters definitely got their work in in last year's meeting, that 14 7 overtime thriller. Aviate is in punt formation. And guess who's punting? Of course. <laughs> Josiah punter Purdy, the punter. Three, Josiah Purdy. He lined up as a punter when it was fourth and inches in the first half, but eventually they then brought the regular formation out and he ran it for the conversion. And of course, Purdy and Cork's a great punt, sending Mendez back to field it inside his own 35. Makes the first two men miss. Can't shake through the grasp of the third guy. And it'll be a chance for Rutherford now getting the ball back after their first defensive stop of the night. You know, and I talked to Nick DeCalso before the game, and I said, what makes Josiah Purdy so, so good? And he says, well, he plays every position. That, that's the first, he'll, he'll be a lineman, he'll be a quarterback, he'll be the running back, he'll be a wide receiver, he'll punt. He kind of does a little bit of everything. And then, up, oh, you just got to add the little sprinkle. He's a pretty good defensive player, too. He had you know, a couple picks there, so the kid does it all. He's been doing everything to put his team in position to win back this championship. Speaking of putting in a position to win a title, here's Mendez out in the open field. A big play there for Rutherford, and he can't let number one free as he's a game changer for the Bulldogs. Mendez is a terrific run. You just can't bring him down. And you know, big gain here, 24 yards, just hard nose running. Will Vera with the tackle from behind. As Mendez once again has been as advertised this evening. Had the two scores last year in the win for Rutherford at home. And he has been exceptional. Abilani Mendez, the 5'10, 180 pound senior. Coming into tonight's game, he's now eclipsed over 2,500 total yards of offense in his incredible varsity career. As there's a stoppage here. As the referee trying to change and update, I think, the time and the scoreboard. That's so right now it's listed as 336. Now he's getting the time back to 348. First down and 10 for Rutherford. It's Mendez. 126 yards rushing, and now he's lined up as a wide receiver, split to the right side. As a receiving score here tonight for Rutherford. It's a handoff to Finelli up the middle. Finelli up the and middle. Once again, as we've seen, seen for the majority of this game here, Scott, and Rutherford's by, offense, John they've Meyer. routinely entered into Hasbro Heights' side of the field. It's just about can they finish off these drives with a touchdown? Yeah, they move the football excellent. I mean, every everything they've done in this game, except what the score looks like, you know, and everything has come down to those turnovers. That's three turnovers now that they gave up off penalties. I mean, or, or off points off turnovers. High catch for Landrigan. Uh, as he hauls in that catch from Landrigan. Russell right in the middle of the field and another first down conversion for Rutherford. Tackle made by Mateo. And they continue to move the football. This time they go to the air and beautiful catch. Again, Rutherford going to the line quickly trying to Pick up the pace of the tempo, giving it to Mendez, Mendez as Mendez is going to be taken it's down. Up by number 52, Anthony Marino. As Anthony Marino, number 52, making the stop, the 6'3", 220-pound senior who had four tackles in their semifinal victory against Park Ridge. Had 19 tackles on the season coming into tonight's action for the defensive tackle, and that front four has been strong here tonight for the Aviators. Certainly, they buckled down in that opening drive, forcing the field goal. Here's Mendez up the guts. Mendez up the middle. Brought down, the but not before he could again move the pile and get another first down for Rutherford, who are threatening for their first points of this second half. Well, you know, Rutherford has controlled the clock and moved the chains much better than Hasbrook had to do today. But uh, just, you know, this is why they win so many games, and this is what makes Rutherford such a dominating team. Mendez continues to pad his stats here. Cuts through and finds his way into the end zone for a touchdown. His second touchdown of the evening as Mendez has one 
through the air and now on the ground and Rutherford keeps their hopes alive with 206 left to go here in the third. You know, guys like Purdy and Mendez, they, they just make it look so easy. You know, two tremendous athletes on opposite sides just make it look easy. And we're honored to be witness to two players that are really going to be legendary players when everything's said and done in the course of these programs for their respective sides. Coach Howe was saying, you really don't see a player like Mendez coming through a program all that often. And that time, the extra point is no good. So Rutherford had one kick blocked that time and sails wide. So Rutherford will trail by 13 now, 35 to 22. As a player is down on the turf for Hasbrook Heights. This game is still far from over. Two scores separate these teams, and you got a whole fourth quarter to come. As a flag is also right next to the player that's injured on the field for Hasbrook Heights. As we'll have to see what the call is if the penalty was against Heights, and they'll re kick it. So the penalty is against Hasbrook Heights. Let's take a look at what happened. Well, makes the snap, good hold, and coming in and. As Robertson seems to be okay there after he was hurt on that extra point attempt, he was coming in off the edge to try to block the kick. And seems to be a little gingerly walking off the field. You know, and he's been banged up a little bit all, all night long. He took a hit in the first half on a run. Uh, then he may got hit another time. I think there's something that's lingering on him today. You know, and you got to remember, when you get a little injury and then you mix in 45 degrees, oh, that it gets colder and colder. And he's had a busy night there, 130 yards of total offense for his side. And because of the penalty, it's new life for Rutherford, and they're going to go for two. Give it to Mendez, a smart move. As there's no sign yet, and now it is a two-point conversion for Mendez. So that's a big turn of events there after it looked like it was going to be no good on the extra point. Instead, the penalty running into the kicker allowed Rutherford to go for two, and now they make it a 35-24 deficit. Well, they just keep creeping in, and a long way to go. 14 minutes left to go in this game. Eh, he broke the plane. So it was all Mendez on that drive, the touchdown run, and then the two-point conversion has brought his team back within striking distance with 2.06 left to go here in the third quarter of play. Trying to win back-to-back -back NJIC championships as the Rutherford Bulldog mascot still very confident in his side, and they have a right to be as they have a long win streak. And they fill with their offense. They're always going to be within it. Six, six plays, 63 yards. Just over two minutes before Mendez went in from 10 yards out. Well, I think offensively, <coughs> Rutherford is really in every category out and outplayed you know, Hasbrook Heights and everywhere in the category except the score. It's just those three costly James turnovers James that have really been the Achilles heel for Rutherford here tonight. Uh, the offensive efficiency on the other side for Hasbrook Heights has been outstanding for them. Only one punt in this game for Hasbrook Heights. So Lawson will tee it up. You have to wonder if they're going to be trying to go with some of these short squib kicks here and see if a funny bounce can go their way. Thirty-five twenty-four, Hasbrook Heights on top. Both teams undefeated this season. Meeting for the second consecutive year in the NJIC championship. And look at that pursuit on the special teams. For Rutherford making the play in the open field as Guzman makes the play. Normally one of the stars on offense for this Rutherford side. Well, just a great job on coverage and <clears throat> coming in and pursuing hard. And, well, that's the way you, that's the way you make a play. Special teams trying to get Rutherford back in the game as well. Uh, you know what? The lower you tackle, the more opportunity you have to bring them down. Minicello is a dangerous returner as well for Hasbrook Heights. Here's Lee throwing across the field and a jump ball taken in by. Ian Rinky. 
what a great catch, but what a great throw. I mean, he was on his back foot, and he put that ball 40 feet, 40 yards in the air. Spencer Lee going back. Look at this. Off his back foot. That's 40 yards in the air. And Ian Rinky coming down with it. Another big play here tonight from the senior wide receiver who has a touchdown in that first half. Also have to factor in the wind sw swirling around here. That's a big arm there for cold, number four. Cold weather, uh, just a terrific play. Now Lee's number called, and he's going to show off his athleticism and his legs, putting the shoulder down to finish off that run. And enough for another first down for Hasbro Heights as the offense moving and grooving, moving the chains here at home. Well, Hasbrook Heights knows that they got to put something back on the board here. This is a Rutherford team that has, you know, been scoring. And, you know, look at this. Fakes the handoff and quickness. Spencer Lee showing off the athleticism. Hasbrook Heights trying to respond right away to that touchdown drive that Rutherford just orchestrated. First down and 10 for the Aviators. All spotted at the Rutherford 33 yard line. Trips wide receiver to the top of your screen. To the slot left is Purdy with the white sleeves on. Toss play, dangerous there. And re reversing field to the near side is Robertson. Turns it back to the right. Picks up about two yards. So no worse for the wear is number 26 in black and orange after he was hurt on that extra point attempt a couple of moments ago. As the clock continues to tick down here in the final stages of the third quarter. As Spencer Lee, six of seven for 196 and three touchdowns. He has been brilliant in being the maestro of this offense for Hasbro Heights. Second down and long. Robertson bouncing it, makes the first man miss. A stiff arm, but can't avoid the tackle there on the ankles by Mendez, who makes the defensive play. And the final play of that third quarter, as both offenses showing off their strengths here. As we have ourselves a fun finish in the store for our fans to watch here on Verizon Files 1 Sports. As Hasbro Heights getting Robertson into the end zone, Mendez and company answered. Fourth quarter upcoming next on Verizon Files One Sports. Welcome back to chilly Hasbro Heights, New Jersey, for the start of the fourth quarter with the home sided Aviators on top of Rutherford, 35 to 24. And this has a field not only of a, of a conference championship but more of a state final as New Jersey will begin their state playoff run beginning next weekend. The teams will be seated and the Aviators certainly will be a threat to be maybe the three-time defending state champs as they've won in back-to-back -back seasons. They have their sights on recapturing this NJIC Conference Championship here this evening. Third and long. Swing route to the far side, and Rutherford will make the defensive play. As Landrigan will take down Robertson. And now it's going to be fourth down. Now it's going to be a four down territory. I, I don't see them punting it here. You know, although when you have a weapon like Purdy, you could set up in punt formation and run it like a Wildcat set. And only an 11 point advantage right now. So, a two score game, a two score lead for Hasbrook Heights. There's Purdy looking at his sideline for the instructions. He's going to be split out as a wide receiver here. Hasbrook Heights lining up to go for it. Fourth down and seven. As they continue the tick the clock down, would they possibly think about taking a penalty here for yardage? They won't. They'll snap it. Here's Lee, plenty of time. Rolls in the pocket, gets hit as he throws. Did Purdy make the reception? He did! A huge conversion on fourth down by the superhero that wears number three, Josiah Purdy. Oh, what, a, what a job by this young man. And I'll tell you, what a job by Spencer Lee. He able to come out, get out of traffic, and make the throw on the run, off balance. And that's a great catch. He got his arms underneath there. 
Hey, you got to give it to the officials. That was a terrific play there. You know, yeah. As soon as you get your arms underneath and you know separate the ball to the ground, you make the play. That's a good play. A huge conversion there for Hasbrook Heights. First down and ten deeper now in Rutherford territory, and maybe a backbreaking play this evening for the Rutherford defense. And again, credit Lee, who took a wallop at the tail end of that pass. Hands it off to Robertson. As he'll bounce it to the far side, but it can't find any room to roam. Great tackle in the open field by Eugene Kim, number five. And what that first down did, it takes another couple minutes off the clock. Now Robertson just had nowhere to go on this time, had no idea to get to the edge, and you know, good box on the end. Second down coming after a loss on the play of two. Second and 12 with under 10 minutes left to go in regulation. Lee throws across the middle. Is it caught? They're saying right now, is it a touchdown? It is. Took some time. Rink with a touchdown, and he's slow to get to his feet. That's his second score of the night. And Hasbro Heights again victimizing Rutherford through the air. Well, Rinky goes to the outside, outside, throws the ball, and that's a catch. That's not even a question. It's not even a question. Another look again at this touchdown throw from Spencer Lee. Without a doubt. As he cross the goal line as well with the catch. And it's another huge play on offense for Hasper Kites. Extra point coming up. All smiles there after the touchdown. He seems to be okay. Ian Rink with his second receiving score of this game. And Hasbrook Heights has been brutally efficient through the air here tonight with Lee and company. As Hasbrook Heights, a team known more for their running exploits, lighting up the scoreboard through the air here tonight. They had only five passing touchdowns on the season coming into tonight's game. That just shows how dangerous and effective this offense can be. High snap, so a broken play. Hasbrook Heights looking to throw it over to the near side. That pass bounces off the turf, so the extra point will be no good. And Hasbrook Heights will have their lead be at 41 to 24 with 9.43 left to go in the fourth. But what about that drive? Eight plays and 80 yards, just over four minutes. And ends up with that touchdown, but again, the huge back breaking play if you're Rutherford was that fourth and long conversion on the reception by Purdy. Yeah, <clears throat> you know, now, now, if, you know, you need to come down and move the ball. If you're Rutherford, you know, you got to just start putting the ball in the air a little bit more, trying to make some big plays. You know, now, now the score becomes biggest separation, 943 left. Again, a look at that fourth down conversion. Congratulations, you can pick up your money at... Mm. kept it off the turf there on the big throw from Lee. Yeah, just terrific play. And then the touchdown to Rink across the middle. And the touchdown pushes this lead once again to 41 to 24. Rink with two touchdown catches here tonight. Had one on the season prior to this one. And the Hasbrook Heights Aviator faithful certainly are loving things here. As they're hoping that their team brings back the hardware tonight. They won the championship a couple of seasons ago and lost that heartbreaker at Rutherford last season. They're trying to snap the Rutherford long win streak just as the Bulldogs snapped an 18 game win streak for Hasbrook Heights last season. Both teams state champions last season. On the kickoff, Mendez, the ball is loose. And it looks like Rutherford just was able to fall on it as Mendez will recover his own fumble. It'll be first down and 10 for the Bulldogs. 9.33 left to go here in the fourth quarter, running out of time here to make up this ground. Uh, they're gonna have to start run, you know, getting that football quick and putting the ball in the air and making some big plays. They need to come up with something big here. 
cold night with the wind swirling, but what a great football atmosphere. Jam-packed stadium here at Depkin Field in Hasbro Heights, New Jersey. As these two Bergen County rivals squaring off for this conference championship. And the offense has played its part in both sides, lighting up the scoreboard after only 21 combined points between the two teams in last year's final. Russell. Looks to go deep and almost jumping up and intercepting on that route was Hasbro Heights as the ball knocked down. Good defensive play there by number 12, Dylan Grassafi, the 5'7 senior. Really put the ball up top, just out of the arm stretch. We actually just deflected. And Hasbro Heights' secondary has victimized Russell three times already in this game. Three turnovers so costly as Heights has been able to cash in each time for points. Be a handoff on second down to Guzman. Guzman will stack up at the first down marker and continue to move the pile like a rugby scrum to get additional yards and a first down for the Bulldogs. Well, the one thing we've seen tonight is Rutherford has the ability to run the football up the middle for gain and gain positive yardage. And you know, we, we keep talking about, we're bringing it back to the turnovers, three turnovers resulting in scores for Hasbrook Heights. And, you know, there's the difference in your score. On first down and 10, Russell once again will look to fire and will be intercepted. The fourth interception forced by Hasbrook Heights this time. It's by Jenkins. I hear Jenkins, the junior, will pick off Russell. And Hasbrook Heights defense has continued in its exceptional play here this evening when it matters the most. You know, Hasbrook Heights defensively in the secondary has been flawless today. They've been able to read the quarterback, be able to step in. You know, these aren't bad throws that are coming across. These are just good defensive plays. For a Rutherford offense that ran wild for 362 yards on the ground in their semifinal win against then unbeaten New Milford. They've become more of a one dimensional team throwing the ball here tonight and that's worked against them throwing four interceptions on the, on, on the evening. Another turnover that Hasbro Kites is going to look to cash in with nine minutes left to go here in the fourth. Up 41 to 24. A little miscommunication before the snap of that ball will force the Aviators to take a charge timeout. Again, leading 41 to 24. The coach, you know, Cosmo, uh, has to be thrilled at again what his team has been able to do in bouncing back after last year's loss in this game. And this team has been trending upwards all these past few seasons. Again, back to back champions in North One Group One. Were knocked out in the North One Group One quarterfinals back in 2015, but they look primed for defense of their title here and maybe a three-peat coming Hasper Kite's way for the postseason just around the corner. Such a great guy to talk to before the game. You know, you know what? He, he came over to talk to me, and then he says, listen, when they get in their huddle, I have to run over and talk to them, but I'll come back and finish discussing it with you. You know, a lot of coaches like, hey, sorry, I'm out of time. we got a game to play. He ran over, took us two minutes with his team, and then was gracious enough to come back and speak with us. First-class guy. One of the best coaching ambassadors is Coach Nick Del Calzo here in northern New Jersey. As again, he's on his way to over 250 wins in his illustrious career. Purdy, how does he get through all those defenders and still churning his legs and moving the pile forward? That looked like that play was going to be a loss in the backfield, and Purdy found a way to keep on moving and grooving. You know, you know if you show the film tomorrow and, and you, you're, you're Rutherford, this is what you show them. This is all you need to show them and say, this is why we potentially did not come on top tonight, because we could not bring down the running back. You know, this is something that has to be cleared up if you want to make a run at a state title. And on the other side, if you're Hasbro Kites, you're showing that film and you're telling your team, if you're Coach Del Caso, we're up 17 and that effort is still being displayed late in the fourth quarter. That could help lead them to another state championship. Robertson, Robertson trying to explode up the middle of the, the field as Hasbro Heights getting close to another first down. 
And a stoppage here as it looks like there's an injury on the field short. for Rutherford. Timeout on the field. As Robertson will be marked just shy of the first down. As the injured players, Chris Avramitis, the senior for Rutherford. So Avramitis, who now being helped off the field by a couple of teammates, a 5'11 senior with three tackles and a win against Lodi earlier this season. 295 pounds in the middle of that defense for this Rutherford defensive front four. A big space eater in that defensive tackle position, and Andy Howe is going to be relying on him to get healthy quickly when his team <clears throat> starts their foray into the state sectional playoffs. So it will be third and inches upcoming after that injury at stop play with 747 left to go here in the fourth quarter as coach Andy Howe talking things over with his defense knowing that they're in desperate need of a stop here to force a fourth down opportunity the coach Del Cazzo has always had a trick up his sleeve with his offense here this evening Robertson behind Lee the handoff is to Robertson to the left side, spinning through a couple of defenders and contorting his body down for another first down here for Hasbrook Heights. When pressed, Scott, they've always had the answer they've needed here to move the chains. Yep, and Michael Robertson, just a terrific game being played today. Not giving up. I mean, this is just once again, we, and I, I used it in the keys, you got to be able to wrap up, and, and, and that's been a big, big deficiency today. Just the offense that Hasbro Heights has generated after the initial contact made by their wide receivers and running backs has been incredible this evening. And the time ticks down in favor of the home side. Big play there by Lawson making the tackle by right the line of scrimmage against Robertson. Lawson Fisher, the 6'2 senior defensive end, with four tackles in this meeting against Hasbro Heights last season. Last season, it was a tale of a completely different game. Rutherford's defense allowed only 211 total yards of offense on that night to Hasbro Heights. That has not been the story here tonight. Hasbro Heights has been practically unstoppable this evening when having the ball on O. Yes, they're electing to take a lot of time off the clock before each snap of the ball now. Spencer Lee, the junior signal caller, has been brilliant here in his first start of an NJIC championship timeout game. Aviators. And Asper Heights will take the timeout just as the play clock was about to expire, stopping the clock with 6.13 left to go here in the fourth quarter. And enjoying a 17-point lead, and once again, Spencer Lee has been brilliant under the lights when it's mattered the most here in this conference championship. Well, you know, he came into this game today, 33 for 43, passing, and, you know, he's able to attack quick, first play of the game, able to hit Isaiah Purdy for 66 yards. That set the tempo, and then he goes up in the air again, Purdy, and just another great catch. And, you know, he's throwing the ball with a tremendous amount of confidence, able to have the patience and poise to sit there and be able to throw it and then once again Ian Rinky again making a catch just a solid game for Spencer Lee I mean you know you're 90% throwing 9 for 10 232 and four touchdowns those are some fantasy numbers <laughs> and again after you're coming into this game throwing five total touchdowns on the season and you could possibly with one more tie that in a conference championship game that's that's a pretty good Friday night uh, without a doubt after the timeout, it's going to be second down and 11 for Hasbro Heights in Rutherford territory. Bulldogs needing a desperate sign have not been able to turn over the Aviators here this evening. After the timeout, it's going to be another razzle dazzle play down the near side. And there's the fifth touchdown pass of the night to Spencer Lee. Touchdown, Aviators. Nick Lujic, the recipient of that touchdown. 
Well, Spencer Lee, he is just coming to his own, not known as a passing quarterback. And hey, today just changed all of that. Nice run after the catch there for Hasbrook Heights, and they've made it look awfully easy here this evening on offense as Spencer Lee coming into this one fans five touchdown passes on the season while well, he has five touchdown throws in this conference title game alone. He'll do the holding on the extra point attempts. And the kick is up and the extra point is good. And Hasbrook Heights who were held to only seven points in this conference championship game last season have produced 48 points here tonight against unbeaten Rutherford. Well, Spencer Lee once again throws the fake, comes around, and I'll tell you, not afraid to stand in and just makes a nice soft touch throw. And, and then they've been able to make the plays after the catch. So what a terrific game for Spencer Lee. Spencer Lee near perfection here this evening. 10 of 11, 258, and five touchdowns. I, I mean, that is just you, you just that is just called efficiency. Called into service has been unbelievably accurate. That one incompletion tipping off the hands of Robertson in the third quarter. But he has been calm, cool, and collected here, and looks like he is just going to be an absolute gem of a player for years to come. Only a junior here for Hasbrook Heights. So correction, that touchdown was to Josiah Purdy. So Purdy, whose jersey ripped before in that earlier portion of the drive, wearing number 36, he fooled me, but he didn't fool everybody else in attendance. Another touchdown for Purdy. So he can do a little something wearing number three and also now number 36. Yeah, I'll tell you. <clears throat> so Purdy was wearing number 36 after the equipment issue with his last jersey and then Picks up another receiving score here tonight. Give him three touchdown catches through the air. He's also accounted for a touchdown throw, a blocked extra point, a great punt, really just doing everything. Uh, no, I, this kid just does it all. I mean, defensively, offensively, he just has every number. The interception, absolutely. And he punts. <laughs> and the punt was a good one here in the swirling winds, but Purdy has been as advertised. As Hasbrook Heights teeing it up and ready to kick off. And you could tell, Scott, just the way that this team came out here tonight in Hasbrook Heights, they were waiting for this moment all since last year. They went on and capped off a very impressive season with a sectional championship, which is the ultimate goal, but they had revenge on their minds and they really executed to perfection here today. The man fell down with a return was Cruz Duran. The ball seemed to be out, but the referee whistled immediately and said he was down by contact. So it will be Rutherford taking over. But Purdy and company have been incredible here this evening at home. Yeah, Purdy has been fantastic. I, I mean, I don't know what else you could have asked that kid to do. And, you know, and, I mean, you look at all the players out here that, that had huge games. I mean, Ian Rinke with a terrific game today. Robertson put up monster numbers. Spencer Lee put up big numbers. And, you know, four receptions, 129, three touchdowns. And, and you know, and then you got to throw in the interception. And uh, now the pressure being brought down for a sack by Hasbrook Heights. As the Heights defense has been aggressive all evening long. And John Settlemeyer, the sophomore defensive end with the tackle in the backfield. Quick hitter to the near side to Mendez, has the blockers down the field. And Russell again, if you give Mendez, Mendez an first inch, down. she'll take it a mile. That's a big first down with a player down behind the play, but quickly getting to his feet was Landrigan. But a first down to Mendez has been stellar as well for his side. It's a nice quick pass to the outside. Mendez has been fantastic, you know, regardless whether or not uh, they, they come up on the short end here. You got to credit Mendez for the job that he's done for Rutherford. And he most likely will go over 3,000 total yards of offense in his career with the playoffs approaching for Rutherford. He's going to be an all everything player that people will talk about for years to come in Rutherford football history. That time sailing high and another interception. The fifth interception of the night for Hasbrook Heights. 
as Dylan Grasafe, the senior, making the pick. And a tough night of the office there for the offense of Rutherford. And Grasafe's been playing a terrific game all night long. He's been able to go to keep him on man coverage. Stay right with them this time. That was kind of an easy interception, too. You, know, you get the ball hit right to you. But you know what? You earn that right because of how hard you played on defense all evening long. So now the Heights offense back on the field after another turnover forced by this defense. First down and 10 for Hasbrook Heights and a 48 to 24 advantage. Five turnovers on defense here tonight for the Aviators defense Robertson with a handoff and a flag thrown as he carries it up the field. It's going to be a motion call against Hasbrook Heights bringing that play back. So this is certainly the recipe for success for the Hasbrook Heights Aviators program. Produce five turnovers on defense be unstoppable on offense. That's going to make them certainly a favorite once again to maybe have the three peat for sectional championships for coach. Nick Del Calzo. Well, they're putting themselves in a great line, and you know he keeps pulling these plays out of the the, the playbook. It, you know, just amazing job on the offensive side and defensive side. You force five turnovers against a a, a high octane team like River uh, like Rutherford. You know, this is a, this is a high quality ball club. Up to the penalty, it's going to be first down and 15. Purdy with the handoff. Josiah Purdy, Purdy the still running. In and, out. and finally will be collar down for the tackle, but not before Purdy once again doing more damage in the Stop open field. Fisher. Have to be careful here. As he'll have to go through another jersey if that one gets ripped. Started off as his normal number three. Then it looked like his collar got ripped on a run. So wearing a teammate's jersey, wearing now number 36 and had that last touchdown catch. Now it's going to be a sideline warning against Hasbrook Heights. It will not be a penalty, just a warning the first time. And the referees really enforced that rule this year. And, you know, I think it's a good rule. You keep control of the sideline, keep them off the side and prevent injuries. A lot of smiling faces on that home sideline here at Hasbrook Heights. Minichello up the middle. As well, another running back, Rocco Minichello, getting the handoff. He's had a couple of carries here tonight, as well as kickoff returns. And an 84-yard kickoff return against Park Ridge. As we're under. Four minutes left to go here in the fourth quarter of play. And a statement performance here at home for Hasbrook Heights. Third down and four now. Again, as Hasbrook Heights tries to milk as much of the time as possible. Lawson getting the initial Any penetration and fin finishing up with the tackle was Regan Landrigan to make Landrigan the stop and stop. forcing fourth down close to <laughs> midfield here for Hasbrook Heights. Fans, again, I, we ask you to stick around. As Lee and company will venture Trophy off the field, and it will be a punting be situation a here for Hasbro Heights, one of the game. few times this evening. As Purdy is forced into service, and of course, who else? Josiah Purdy handles the punting duties here at Hasbro Heights. Probably be most likely the one who has to turn off the lights here at the stadium, too, before we're all said and done. One of the best individual players in New Jersey high school Mike football Mendes. and we've seen He's why here today on the biggest the stage. A lot of pressure coming at Purdy just gets it away. Takes a nice bounce. Mendez will scoop it up get past the first man makes the second man miss still with it. And the initial man Rake, who missed on that first tackle recovers and makes the stop on the special teams negating what could have been an even more dangerous and long return for Mendez. And like you mentioned Scott even though it might be in a losing effort Mendez has been as advertised as well. Some programming college is going to be getting a great football player. Nabilene Mendez. <clears throat> Very tough runner. I mean you, you can't bring him down. 
Again, fans, quick reminder, this game will be shown on Verizon Files channel. Andy Howell has to be wondering what if on Wednesday night at and what type of adjustments his team have to make going into the sectional playoffs, just as Hasbrook Heights was in that situation here last season. Coming off a loss, they rebounded quickly and went on to win the title. His Bulldogs will have to respond from adversity here after tonight Mendes as Mendez again continuing to fill up the stat sheet with another big run down the near side. Jenkins. And a sweet revenge for Hasbrook Heights after their long win streak was snapped by Rutherford in this title game last year. And Hasbrook Heights will return the favor. As this is the third edition of the NJIC Championship. And strung out in space. And now Hasbrook Heights will claim two out of the first three, having made appearances in all three of the conference title games since this conference's inception. As Mendez, 19 carries, 173 yards, and a touchdown on the ground. He's been brilliant also with that receiving score. That got Rutherford going in the first half. Well, you think about it. <clears throat> you get going to the season last year. They win that game last year. That would be three consecutive, you know. Very impressive program. The meeting of the four divisions in this conference says after that play, Finelli, nice carry to the Finelli far side. The and with this conference, it's four divisions. And then the leaders of the four the divisions title. play down to a final four. And that's where this year was Park Ridge and New Milford, the two other teams, before Rutherford and Hasbrook Heights advance back to the championship game. And Heights will hold up the trophy this year. And both teams are probably going to be expected to be two of the favorites once again to maybe win the state title down at MetLife Stadium. Russell will throw. That one tips in the second area as Jenkins was trying to make a play on it for maybe his second interception of the evening. As we're under one minute left to go on the Hasbrook Heights fans playing final countdown. As they and all the fans who've been bundled up here in the cold sensing what's about to happen as their team continues to be perfect on the season and getting in a position to hoist the NJIC championship. Fourth down and three for Rutherford. They try to keep this offensive drive alive. Mendez to the slot to the bottom of your screen. And off up the middle. Guzman, Finelli, excuse me, stacked up. It looks like it's going to be a turnover on downs. And first down upcoming for Hasbrook Heights, and that's been the story here tonight. The defense for Hasbrook Heights has been outstanding in slowing down this Rutherford offense that was really clicking for the majority of this game, but forcing five turnovers, making a play there here in the waning moments as well. It's been a balanced effort for Hasbrook Heights on offense and defense here today. First down and 10 for the Aviators with 51 seconds left to go. And for Coach Del Caso, his team really opened eyes here today and showing that they're not just a ground and pound offensive attack. They could throw the ball, unleashing this junior quarterback, Spencer Lee, to five touchdown passes on the night. And he'll take the snap of the knee in the victory formation. As what a performance here at home in front of a large crowd assembled to see two of the small school powerhouse football programs in the state. And Scott, this was what an effort for Hasbrook Heights. You know, this was just a very, very good game. We knew it was going to live up to top billing. And you know, last year, Rutherford stunned Hasbrook Heights. This year, they repaid the favor. As Hasbrook Heights will run out the remainder of this clock and get the congratulations even from Rutherford. These two teams matching up again here in the final, and this time around, Hasbrook Heights and Axe Revenge will be crowned their 2018 NJIC champions, the Hasbrook Heights Aviators, who move to 8-0 on the season.
with an emphatic 48 to 24 victory over Rutherford here in the title game as both teams will prepare to march to the Meadowlands next in the state sectional playoffs. We'll be back for more here from Hasbrook Heights, New Jersey, as the Aviators are your champions over Rutherford 48-24 on Verizon Miles One Sports. Hasbrook Heights presented the trophy for the NJIC Championship here in 2018 after an emphatic 48-24 victory over defending champions Rutherford. Now a big reason why is our player of the game. Let's head down to Scott Green, who's with Josiah Purdy of Hasbrook Heights. Josiah, you guys found yourselves here last year. Same situation. Rutherford was able to take you guys out. This year, you were able to come back and win the NJIC. How's it feel? It feels amazing. You know, like last year, we lost that game in overtime. It was a sad loss. They played well. We played, we played well, too, but they just outbeat us. But uh, it, feel, it feels good. You know, it was payback. And Let's talk about your performance today. We were trying to figure out what is it that you can't do on the football field. You threw a touchdown pass. You can run. You made some great catches. Talk, just talk about that one-handed grab you made back there. You trying to do a little Beckham there? I don't know. It just happened. It was in a moment. It just happened, you know. <laughs> but I don't know. It was uh, my quarterback. You know, he threw a nice ball. I just went up and got it. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have got that ball. So. And talk about your defense today, able to get five takeaways. How big was your defense today? Our defense was key of the game. You know, defense wins championships, and that's what we did. We, uh, we came out to play today, and we <laughs> he won. And, you know, it feels good. But, uh, yeah, our defense was uh, better today. Now you move on. Uh, what does this team need to do to try to make another run at a state championship? Make uh, as least mistakes as possible for the rest of the season. Congratulations on a great win. So congratulations to Josiah Purdy, one of the best single performances that we've seen all fall here in the Garden State. An all-everything player, and he's going on to celebrate with his team, again capturing for the second time in three seasons the NJIC Championship as Hasbro Heights races past Rutherford here tonight at home, 48-24. to This broadcast has been a presentation of Verizon Fios One Sports. Special thanks to our producer, Frank Lasquadro, our director, Dan Lippenholtz, as well as the rest of our tremendous Verizon Fios One Sports broadcast crew. So for my broadcast partner, Scott Green, I'm Dan Long saying so long from Hasbro Heights, where the Aviators are the new champions. This has been a special presentation of Verizon Fios One Sports.